Hello and welcome to the other side here on the showroom view. Today we're joined by a Birmingham City fan. How are you doing, mate? Oh, I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm not bad, thank you. First of all, let us know your name and what podcast you're coming from. Well, I'm Tom and I'm from the uh, Blues Focus podcast, but I also do content for Blues Focus. We've got two pages, but um, yeah, go check out Blues Focus, especially if you're a Blue Nose. See, I didn't want to come straight in with podcasts. I knew you did work on other stuff as well. So I thought yeah. I'd, give, I'd give you the choice which one to plug first. Gets confusing. <laughs> uh, so for Birmingham, a bit of a tough season last season with Boyer, uh, Boyer in charge. How do you think it went on a personal level? Did you meet expectations or was it worse than you thought? Um, I think it was a lot worse than we all thought, to be honest. Um, with the way the way things began under Karanka, there was so much hope and positivity um, considering Karanka's calibre, the fact that what he'd done at Middlesbrough, um, and to be fair, he didn't do badly at Forest as well. You know, when he uh, when he left, they were seventh and four points off the playoffs. So we were expecting to be up there, and we made some decent signings. Um, Mikel San Jose was so random, and I just I couldn't believe we'd even signed him. To be honest, um, but no, there was a lot of expectation. I think um, to have a much more improved season uh, to com- well, compared to recent seasons before that constant relegation battles i think we're all just hoping for a maybe just outside the top 10 sort of finish um definitely did not work out that way um, <laughs> but obviously um it kind of started that way to be fair we started well um the karanka pragmatic style was what we expected it to be we beat brentford on the opening day 1-0 and look at what they went on to do. They got promoted. So, you know, it was it was exciting. Um, really looked like we could do something. Then we had a couple of injuries, then head drops. We lose to Wickham 3-1 at home. And then that was it. That was the downward spiral under Karanka. And he was always too arrogant to change his style of play um, and to play to all the players' strengths. Yeah. And then as soon as Lee Bowyer comes in with 10 games to go, we were staring down the barrel, really. We had to play all of the top six in our final 10 games. So it really wasn't looking promising at all. Um, yeah, and then Boya comes in and we go and win five out of the 10 and uh, draw two and we're safe uh, with a few games to go. Um, so it was it was quite amazing, really, what the, the job that he managed to do in the end. It was unbelievable. Um, but all he did was just come in and play to the player's strength, particularly Djokovic, and um, got him scoring again. I always say the biggest crime that Karanka committed was um, making us all think that Djokovic was finished. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but no, uh, that, was, that was kind of an overview of the season, really. But Boya did an amazing job for the 10 games he came in at the end of the season. I was honestly, I'd started the League One career mode on FIFA. I was convinced we were down. <laughs> Um, so, you know, it was that was the way it was looking. But to come and beat, I, th- I think, four of the top six, uh, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, so, no, it really does give us hope going into next season, the fact that we can beat those sort of sides as well. And I hope it's just not another new manager bounce, but we'll see. But, no, he did a great job. So, looking at that then, we obviously you said, boy, he's come in, done an amazing job, got the team playing at, at how they want to play, got them played to their strengths. What type of football is it that Birmingham play that play to those players' strengths? And what do you think Boy can do going forward? I think um, it's it's quite it's an interesting variety. It's an interesting mix. Um, it's similar to the way we used to play under Gary Rowett a bit in 2016, but I'd say a little bit more prettier actually. Um, it's you know we we like to keep the ball on the floor a lot more. Um, we definitely rely um, on width. Uh, we definitely we definitely use the wide areas of the pitch a lot just to get crosses into the box for players like Djukovic because that's just the way we've always played and it seems to work for us. So he definitely utilises that. However, we do have kind of two systems that we like to play around with. Your, your classic 4-4-2 four, four, um, and then we like to play five at the back and the three midfielders and two up top here and there. Um, it, it really just does depend on the team we play. So what I've learned from Boya so far is when we play a team, we like to match them. So we will virtually copy their formation just so we can match them and hopefully just outrun them and win those individual battles. And if we win those individual battles, then we tend to win the game. So um, it's very much kind of getting into the opposition's head and, um, 
looking out for their weaknesses, taking advantage of that. Um, but the usual way we like to play is looking for a cross in the box uh, to Djukovic. We rarely kind of play through the middle. Uh, however, we are capable of it and we do have players capable of it, but um, we normally rely on the wide men mostly. You just mentioned Djukovic there. Uh, looking at the team you've got now, I know the transfer window is open. It's not entirely in full swing yet, I think. It's been quite quiet so far for yeah. most teams. But looking at the, the players you've got available at the moment, who would you say your star man is? It's tough. It's tough. Um, I, I Obviously, you would say probably our, our main man, I suppose, is Djukovic. Um, but I, if I had to say star man, kind of the, the most gifted player in that squad, yeah. um, I would say Alan Halilovic if we manage to retain him. Uh, contract talks are still going on. They've been going on for a while now. Um, there's been rumours of it collapsing, rumours rumors of it back on, but he is a proper player, Alan Halilovic, and I really hope we can keep him um, because we could certainly build a team around him. Um, you know, he was at Barcelona and called the Croatian Messi for a reason. He's been to AC Milan. It's just injuries have held him back and uh, a lack of first-team football in the end. But, you know, he managed to stay fit when he was at Blues. He only had the one little injury that kept him out for one game. But other than that, he was fantastic. You could tell he shouldn't be in the championship. Yeah. Um, a proper high pedigree. And if we can keep hold of him, then I'd easily say he was our star man. Um, but one player who is on the books uh, is Ivan Sanchez. On his day, he's an unreal player. Um, we signed him last season. And, um, yeah, although he's not very young he's he's getting on a bit he's still so quick and magic feet if you've ever seen the goal he scored against Cardiff you'd see what sort of player he is he just literally waltzed around five Cardiff players and then slotted it top in he has that in his locker yeah. so I'd say the most technically gifted is certainly uh, Ivan Sanchez Looking at that team then you just mentioned quite a few players that could really stand out for you you mentioned keeping hold of them, which I suppose is, is a big thing going forward. Have there been any transfer rumours of which clubs they could be going to if they do go? And has there been any transfer rumours of certain players coming into Birmingham? Uh, yeah, there's a couple going around at the moment. Uh, we are rumoured to have apparently completed deals for uh, Ryan Woods uh, of Stoke. Um, good central midfielder, uh, very creative, uh, decent when it comes to defending, proper box-to-box, -box, I'd say. Yeah. Um, and has shown in that he has what it takes in the championship at Brentford and was good at Millwall last season as well on loan. Um, so, no, I'd be happy if that one comes uh, comes through. Um, I think it's just down to medicals now, uh, hopefully. Uh, but, you know, football's a crazy, crazy game. Anything could change between now and then. Um, and then apparently we've also um, almost completed a deal for Jordan Graham, Gillingham right. winger, um, was it... Uh, I think he was at Wolves for a long time, but just injury-ridden. But had a great season last season, nine goals, six assists, um, and uh, played virtually the majority of the season for Gillingham. Um, so I wouldn't be against that. It definitely brings more competitiveness into the wide areas of the pitch. Uh, but Boyer has said, you know, he's bringing in players to play the way he wants to play, yeah. specifically. He's not just signing people for the sake of it, virtually like we did under Garenka, to be honest. Um so, no, it, it's interesting. And then, obviously, we signed, in January, we signed Sam Cosgrove from Aberdeen for £2 million, um, And he's still not scored. He didn't really get much game time, though, to be honest, I won't lie. Um, but it looks like he's going to go out on loan to Ipswich in League One next season, which I think would be a good move for him because he is very much actually quite a Kiefer Moore mould. Yeah. And he has potential to do well in this division, but he just needs to go and get that experience in League One because uh, he's just, although he was quite prolific in the Scottish Premiership, he's still nowhere near the calibre of the Championship. And for me, that just showed the gap um, between the two divisions. Um, so, yeah, no, it was an interesting one. Then Amari Miller to Leeds. Uh, that right. seems to be one that's going to go through. Um we didn't have him on a pro contract, but he played the last six games of the season. Young starlet, he was fantastic. Looked like he could really kick on next season, but it looks like Leeds have come in and stole him. But they are paying us um, a fee of £1.5 million, which I'd take. But I don't think he's going to get any game time in the Premier League. So I don't personally understand the move, uh, but it would be great if we could get him back on loan. But that's that's all that's really kicking about at Blues at the moment, to be honest. So looking at, uh, at the team that you actually got, Boyer said he wants to bring in certain types of players. If, if it was you in the hot seat, where would you say you need to strengthen most? 
Um, I think the biggest, biggest, biggest hole we have is um, that that number nine role, that striker. Um, because, I mean, you, you'll know the man yourself, uh, Che Adams, we still never replaced him. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we got the 20 odd million for him from Southampton and we just flogged it elsewhere. Never actually replaced him. The closest we kind of came to replacing him was Scott Hogan. Uh, but Scott Hogan is so on and off. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I mean, you'll, you'll know that as well. Yeah, it was exactly so, uh, the same for us, yeah. Yeah, you know, one minute he's firing in regularly and then next minute, one bad game, it sends him on a run of bad games. And uh, yeah, it's definitely Scott Hogan's biggest problem is consistency, but we've just never replaced Che Adams because he was unbelievable for us in uh, the 18-19 season when he bagged 23 goals. Um, and that partnership with Djokovic was just crazy. Um, so yeah, we've we've not replaced that hole for almost three years, and I think we really need to look at doing that. And there's no reason why we couldn't dip into League One or League Two to find that sort of a player. I mean, you know, we we took him from you guys. I think it was for about two million yeah. in in the end, and uh, we certainly turned out to be worth it. I mean, the first first two years of his Blues career really didn't get anywhere. I think he only scored five in his first season and six in his second. So it was kind of like. Okay, one of them average strikers, and then just out of nowhere, he just bulked up, got extremely more quick, and just that partnership with Djokovic made him look unreal. I mean, uh, you'll have watched the England game the other day against yeah. Scotland. Yeah. Although he had three big chances that he didn't put away, he was just a playmaker as well. Like he was pulling the strings for Scotland um, going forward. So now Che is uh, definitely coming coming into his own now in the Premier League at Southampton as well. Had a slow start, but he's got there. But no, we've just never been able to replace him, unfortunately, and I really hope we can do that. He's one of them players that is, he is hard to replace. We, we were lucky in the sense that when he left, we, we had the likes of Sharpie there to kind of yeah. steady the reins, but it, you, not every team can be that lucky when a player is calibre leaves. Looking at exactly. Birmingham, uh, for any Sheffield United fans that haven't watched Birmingham since we went up and since we come crashing back down to earth, um, <laughs> if you were going to describe the Blues to any other fan in the division in three words, what three words would you use? Shit house football. That's, <laughs> that's the best way to put it. Um, you know, it's it's not pretty. Uh, so if there was three words, it'd probably be, you, well, shit house is one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, effective. Yeah. I'd say it was one. And then third would be direct. Sounds about right for a Lee Boy team. But saying yeah. that, if it gets results, nobody cares. People can turn their nose exactly. up at it. If it wins your games, nobody minds. <laughs> precisely, mate, precisely. So before you go, let us know where we can find the podcast and let us know where we can find you on social media. So obviously, uh, yeah, with uh, Blues Focus, we, we have a podcast and stuff. We've got a separate account for the podcast. So uh, go go check those out on Twitter. It's just Blues Focus uh, over there. And then uh, uh, for the podcast, it's Blues Focus Pod. And then on Instagram, it's just Blues underscore Focus. Um, so yeah, and then if you want to check out my socials, then mine's just Tom Oxlam really on all of them. So it's pretty pretty simple. Um, so yeah, no, uh, definitely go check those out. But you'll you'll see my links on the pages anyway for whatever content's out at the time. Lovely stuff. Tom, it's been a pleasure having you on. Uh, good luck for the season, except when you play us. I've been making that abundantly <laughs> clear to everybody. Uh, let's hope yeah. you can get some out of it. Cheers, mate. It's been uh, it's been great to feature. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Uh, I, I enjoy these sort of conversations. And hopefully when we do play you, it'll be like another Jeremy Bella goal. Not Jeremy <laughs> Bella, Jeremy Boger. Um, when he scored that absolute worldy at Bramall Lane. Uh, a few years back another one of those would be nice but yeah no good luck to you for the rest of the season oh, obviously apart from when you you play us <laughs> so yeah I, cheers mate I was thinking well Peter on Love's debut game when we beat you 4-2 but we've both got opposite ends of the spectrum <laughs> 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 no mate it's been, it's been a pleasure I've really enjoyed it thank you cheers na, 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 na.